OK, the floor is yours. OK, thank you, Hocam. Uh, I'm really excited uh, and proud uh, to introduce one of our students, Chilga Sebil, uh, for this session of the morning session. It is the last session of the morning session, actually. And uh, to give some information about her, she is a second year student of English Language and Literature Department at Komkoli University. And she lives in Izmir. Uh, she is a member of Tema Charitable Foundation. And she is a devotee of yoga and training. And today on this session, she will be speaking on her research titled as Art Formatting of Dreams. OK, Julia, the floor is yours. If you are ready. Thank you. Uh, I can share my screen. But how can I? Uh, can you see my screen now? Yes, we can. Okay. I will start. Uh, hello again. I am Tsuga Sevil. I am a second year in English language and literature students in Pamukkale University. Uh, this is my first PACES conference and not face to face, in, first in online setting. Uh, I'm impressed uh, by an interview I watched by Salvador Dali in Grimmelfin Show in YouTube channel. Uh, and so I came together under such a headline and context. I hope you will enjoy. I hope I don't bore you. Let's start with dreams and art. So, oh, basic question is why do we dream? For thousands of years, humans have seen dreams as mystical or some kind of window into our deeper selves. In the Renaissance, as artists and humanists turned to the writings and art of antiquity, they discovered that ancient philosophers like Hippocrates and Aristotle had been tantalized by the subject of dreams. The 5th century Florentine philosopher Marsilio Pigino, in particular, took up the task of interpreting the meaning of dreams. His concept of vocatio anime posits that while sleeping, the soul can be freed from the corporal restraints of the body and achieve a higher spiritual state. And Salvador Dali is parallel to a thought that fits well with this example. Dalindawar states that not only reflect the effects of their dreams uh, Dali in all art works, Dali but also interpret it as a gateway to Dali's mind. And Dali interpreted dreams in his paintings in myriad ways. But its 1944 work, Dream Caused by the Flight of a Bee Around the Pomegranate a Second Before Waking, that takes on both the act of dreaming and its results in the same picture. The artist's wife and muse, Gala, sleeps nude on a rock, formation coming out of the sea. Gala's dreams manifest the top of all, top half of the canvas, where two tigers and the ripple leap toward the resting figure from the mound of a fish, which in turn emerges from a bursting palm grapes. As the title suggests, the onslaught of the dream will wake her moments later. And we see that Dali loved dreams and he said his best ideas came from them. In a um, psychological, in a psychological means that in our dreams and Dali's dreams, why are so fantastic? It, in our dreams, prefrontal cortex, mean logical judgment part of the brain, is disabled. So that's probably why our dreams are so bizarre and do not make any sense. And the entire emotional part of the brain Amygdala and hippocampus lights up like fire, even more active during them waking. But for the most people, only the eyes act, uh, act out in their dreams. The brain, the brain in REM sleep, rapid eye moment sleep, is different from any time in our day or night. For example, if you are going up a ladder in your dream, your eyes will up and up and up but you do not act or while if you are stuck in the middle of a conversation the orientation may vary but again you don't act like this is a another version of visual reality but we don't have a VR glass so 
go back a couple of thousands of years. The purpose and interpretation of the dream was quite different right now. Dreams were seen as messages from the gods, there were warnings, instructions. Many ancient civilizations created a huge manuals to decipher them. Sounds were a big part of a dream interpretation in Egypt. In the second century ED, a, name, a man named Artemidorus became the first real dream researcher. His dream guide was based, based on a scores of intervening from all over the Roman Empire. The specific meanings change over the time. Then at the end of the 16th, British philosopher John Locke called dreams incoherent, frivolous, and irrational. And while by the reign of Queen Victoria, it was a popular belief that eating certain foods can be a result in digestion and caused wildest dreams. For an example of this, a Christmas carol by Charles Dickens, when Scrooge sees an appropriation of his former business partner, he says, you may be an undigested bit of a beef, a fragment of underdone potato. This is a general concept that that time is dream how can see and how its meaning and this is a reflection in literature. In 1899, two books were published that would change the study of dreams. First one is Santiago Ramon Cajal, the father of modern neuroscience, Textura del Sistema Nervisio, and another one, Sigmund Freud, neurologist and the founder of psychologists. Trauma dating, that means dream interpretation. One was by Santiago Roman Cajal, the father of modern science. His books spell out the idea that neurons were like the basic units of nervous system, experiments by system, and experiments by other scientists show that neurons communicate using electrical sounds. And in the 1990s, one surgeon that the exposed brains of the patients with electricity and they experience sudden vision. Sudden vision. Mm. This reminds me just that Macbeth's three rich neurons have created in him, but here the lucid dreamer who turns on the electricity and directs his own dreams has become Macbeth. The imagination projected on him perhaps fits more with Freud's theory. Let's talk about Freud's theory. But the other book, The Interpretation of Dreams by Sigmund Freud, claimed that dreams were disguised representations of our innermost desires. And second year in my that's course year, uh, I'm taking 19th century novel by Jumur Yilmaz Madran, and we are read The Wuthering Heights. When I get this information, I clearly imagine and interpret this Rodrin Hayes novel in that because Rodrin Hayes, our narrator, Mr. Lockwood, experiences a harrowing dream when he's forced to spend the night in the room that once belonged to no longer that's Catherine. Lockwood later describes the encounter to the Heathcliff as a dream, yet Heathcliff's fearful reaction makes us wonder if in fact Catherine's ghost might be more than just a figment of Lockwood's imagination because the character's inner desire is to able to see Catherine. Most of Freud's representations were sexual, but Freud's early supporters, Carl Jung, also believed dreams were messages from the subconsciousness, but they not all sexual. Instead, they contain characters that represent aspects of our inner lives, anxiety, purity, and wisdom. In getting away from the concepts of dreams were from the gods or that dreams the reflected stomach ailment that was all in a program. And dreams have always served as a valuable narrative tool for authors throughout history. A character can receive some valuable wisdom from interpreting the dream or be led astray by their unconscious imagination. Lewis Carroll really took full advantage of these limitless possibilities of writing with a dream setting. In the 19th century, author used Ellis' ability to get lost in the dream state and make connections and observations in her real life.
much like we all actually do when dreaming. In 1922, copies of Interpretation of Dreams by Sigmund Freud burning in Nazi bonfires. That same year, German journalist Charlotte Verdas began to secretly collect the dreams of her fellow students. They were full of corpses and torture, and even people afraid feared about the light. But does a light was shed light on how our anxieties and fears in our daily lives reflect on our dreams? One of the best examples of this Jackson Pollock. After the First World War, abstract painters tried to manage new values in their paintings and to make an art suitable for utopia in their minds. After the Second War, the painters start to revolve around themselves all the time. Pollock puts the colors on his canvas in a random process, but through his senses, without giving up a control. The facial features are reflected with a figurative form. But while this does not bring clarity to the work. It reflects the reality of the confusion of feelings. It is a kind of putting the abstract concepts into concrete. Just as the words of writers and create, creating dreams like Lewis Carroll, Fluck made his experiences and feelings in certain forms, in uncertain forms, like a dream, controlled but abstract, and left his interpretation to the mind of individual before him. He didn't give the name for this artwork, he just said that 22. In fact, all these things I said, most things people dream came from memories and other sides. Although everybody knows that our dreams relate events that happen during the day, but there were actually no exactly studies that had 100% had shown. Stimulus moments develop novel means to express subjective, psychological, and spiritual realities through the landscape of dreams. They are subject matter, features, heavy mixes of fantasy, exorcism, the occult, and that, often the puzzling effect. Meaning, we don't know what's the meaning behind Henry Rose the Sleeping Gypsy. Is the lion that licks the sleeping woman's face a product of her dream or a terror reality? Is the woman really sleeping in the desert at all, or is the whole picture a dream? When Freud did publish his theories on dreams and unconsciousness, the effect on art was so immediate. In the 20th century, dreams become primary source materials for the surrealists, who sought to transcend the constraints of rationality and the oppressive social rules that had led mankind to First World War. The unconsciousness became a creative tool that contained unexpected, unexpected meanings and window onto one's secret inner self. So, the dreams of Germans not also completely random, but they were reflection of waking fears. In a dream, the brain is creating dreams that are not designed to settle on a single answer, but to help us realize all possible answers that are out there. We are tested on new ideas, put things together without the constraints of logic. So, it looks like that dreaming about past is a part of that process of enhancing and improving the memory while we sleep and so that's why maybe the Inception movie can be a uh, real. So, can if we have a conclusion part, we are asking a question when we fall asleep, where do we go and why we dream? And this is answers that philosophers, poets, psychoanalysts have rhapsodized about the answer for centuries. It's visual artists, though, who have again and again sought to show the impossible to imagine in pictures of sleeping subjects, the unseen places we go when we dream. From godly visions to fantasies to nightmares, stomach ailments, the representation of dreams in art have drastically changed since the Middle Age. 
Dali, the surrealist, and their artistic forebears understood the interpretive possibility of dreams as avenues for self-exploration. More importantly, they took full advantage of that question, religion in the creative freedom and imaginative dreamscape. Thus, art formatting dreams, so do dreams formatting art. That's for final part for me. Okay, thank you very much, Chilga, for this great uh, presentation. And uh, the floor is open to questions or any kind of comments. So can I come up with, with a question, Chilka? Uh, thank you very much for your presentation. It was a wonderful presentation. I, I really mean it because as a, as a lover of art, uh, I loved your approach to, to paintings by particularly Salvador Dali uh, from the perspective of dreams, dream sequences. Uh, do you think dreams, uh, dreams support creativity? Yes, exactly. Um, Dali says in that interview exactly like that. My work consists of in the meticulous execution of my dreams. Exactly saying like that. And the scientific fact, this is a support that means dreams are reflected our inner selves. And maybe this, that's why we don't have an exactly answer why do we dream? Because dreams are best way to express our deeper selves and reach our most pure parts. Um, so we can create our individual answers to all the questions we have. And this is within the reality. This came from the reality. Mm -hmm. Thank you. It comes from the reality, but it also comes from the dreams, dreamlike reality. So yeah, I think yeah. I think an artist should be, you know, on a on a slight angle, on a thin line between dream and reality, maybe to combine both of them. Yes, Dali Dali loved them, and Dali applied all of the works. Mm. Yeah, very nice. Thank you. Okay, are there any other questions or comments? All right, maybe I can contribute a little. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, uh, I know your presentation is mostly uh, about dreams and art, but I think I can also uh, contribute to your study from uh, Jung's point of view. Uh, because in his studies, he sees the dreams uh, as not uh, something exactly foreign uh, to ourselves, alien to ourselves, but something that belongs to us, actually. And he uh, interprets that uh, by saying dreams actually uh, decipher, decipher our problems, our inner conflicts in different images, uh, to find a kind of solution, to uh, to give a kind of uh, soothing effect to these uh, conflicts and uh, solutions. And uh, that's why he says uh, the fairies and the uh, old grey bearded uh, men we usually see dream in our dreams. They are actually are, are uh, the representation of our own unconsciousness. And uh, even though the unconscious uh, is usually seeing something dark and uh, negative, since it is unknown, mostly to us. Actually, it tries to uh, help to contribute to our development uh, in a way uh, to cope with our conflicts in daily lives that we, uh, I mean, we choose to ignore and avoid. In that sense, the uh, one word that you said uh, about the dreams, you said the dreams are avenues of self-exploration. -explora so I think in that sense, it, it is, uh, the literature is very uh, uh, rich, uh, is a very rich source uh, to uh, support also your uh, study in literature in that sense. And I advise you to look, have a look to Jung's uh, works, especially uh, the one called 
the aspects of uh, masculinity, I guess, or masculine. Thank you for your comment. And I agree with you. And literature for dreams, uh, like a blank page. You can also draw or you can, if you want, write. This is for your aspects and this is how you look at for the life and want to love, want to live. And, and indeed, I agree with both of Salvador Dali, Pollock, Heathcliff, um, to all extents, because in the intensity and sensitivity of our feelings, our deeper selves, uh, feeling living differ from one to another, just like the difference and variety of interpretation of dream for thousands of years. That's all. All right. Are there any questions or comments? Okay, I mean, the, your presentation was uh, the only presentation uh, that combined art and uh, dreams, actually, in this session. Uh, but I guess we have a question from uh, Miraj Özgut now. Let's uh, listen to him first. Okay, Miraj. Uh, not a question, but humble uh, contribution. Uh, when we are talking about art, and dreams, I believe I would regret if we don't talk about Vincent van Gogh uh, because of the way he transforms the pain, the repression, the depression of his tormented life into uh, aesthetic beauty is marvelous. Uh, for instance, by using a splash of, splash of red and black onto the canvas, you can uh, portray pain quite easily, uh, but using the combination of pain and passion to portray the magnificence of life, that is creativity. That is pure creativity that comes from the unconscious. Thank you for comment. And here he is with us right now. And <laughs> <laughs> um, when I at Yes, go on, please. Sorry for interrupting. Sorry. When it comes to art, um, what comes to mind should not only a beauty, uh, but things to want to living a fragment of an atom, atom to great world living things. This is not uh, just a dream for things. It's a general concept for my art aspects, and I want. So thank you for your comments. And Van Gogh is my best loved painters. Thank you for your comments. Okay, are there any other questions or comments? Okay, it seems like that's all uh, the contribution from our audience for this session. And thank you again, Chala, uh, sorry, not, uh, Tilga, your name is very beautiful, by the way, uh, and uh, see you in the next sessions, hopefully.